we've done everything, but there's always a third party involved. When we pray in the spirit, sometimes it's turning the heart of that person. Somebody is sitting, maybe there's a promotion. Somebody says, no, why should this person be promoted? You have your immigration paper and somebody just puts it by the side. So when we pray in the spirit, it's not about us. It is touching the heart of somebody else. It is removing obstacles out of the way. It is turning the heart of kings around in our favor. That adding that of stone is being removed and replaced with the heart of flesh. Everything that needs to move and align in position that whatever we need is being positioned. That's what happens when we pray in the spirit. And sometimes it might be us as well. We've, we've set our minds, we're praying, but we have a mindset of how we want God to answer the prayer. It says the Holy Spirit knows what we need. Sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we can't see. So that's why we need to pray in the spirit. So we're going to pray in the spirit. And as we we're told yesterday, just reiterating it. If you don't pray in the spirit, this is a season where you say, I'm tired of shortchanging myself. Oh, yes, I have the gift of the Holy Spirit inside of me. By faith, I receive my prayer language in the name of Jesus. And you open up your mouth and let the language flow in the name of Jesus. This is a year, this is a season where we don't want anything that is ours to be left carelessly. Because we didn't do what we, what we need to do. Because we already have it. In the name of Jesus. Remember, what do you see? This is the month of March. How do you see? Oh yes, this first quarter of this year. How do you see it? What do you see? Call those things which be not as though they are in the name of Jesus. Let's press in This is a season of change for us. Oh, yes, this is a year of possibilities. The Lord has spoken through His Son. Uh, this year is a year of possibilities. That means impossible situations will be turned around. In the name of Jesus. Yes, our God has said it. I am the Lord God. The God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me to do? There is nothing that is too hard for our God to do. There is nothing impossible with our God. Begin to declare and decree your expectation. By the end of the first quarter of this year. By the end of the month of May. In the name of Jesus. Yes, the word of God says, as you speak in my ears, I hear you. So shall I do for you in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, what is that situation that seems impossible? Oh yes, the God of possibility says it is nothing to me. It is absolutely nothing to me. I am the God of all flesh. Nothing is impossible with me. Nothing is too difficult for me to do. The art of kings are in my hands. I am the way maker. I make a way where there seems to be no way. There's no situation I cannot turn around. He is the same God that parted the Red Sea. Oh yes, oh yes, the children of God, uh, Israel looked ahead. They saw the Red Sea. They looked behind. They saw Pharaoh and his army. Oh yes, the Lord caused there to be darkness for Pharaoh and his army. 
it caused the wheels of their chariots to be removed. Oh yes, so it would delay them that the children of Israel would be able to cross the Red Sea. There's nothing that God cannot do. Oh yes, anyone, anything that standeth in the way, the Lord has the power to remove. He has the power to obstruct. He has the power to divert. He has the power to distract. There's nothing he cannot do. He does things as he wills. He does things as he pleases. He is the almighty God. The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof. He sits in the heavens, and the earth is his full stone. Oh, yes, he created everything for our pleasure. He created every, everything for our pleasure. The Lord is our shield. Oh, yes, ha ha. Ikabazakata. The Lord is our portion. Ekede Bazakata. He maintains our inheritance in the name of Jesus. He maintains our lot. Ekede Bazekede Bazakata. The Lord maintains our lot. Everything He has purposed that is ours this year. Everything He has purposed that is ours. Oh, yes, in the month of March, we call it forth. We declare it. We decree it. In the name of Jesus, we seal our blessings in the blood of Jesus. Our God maintains our Lord. Yeah, he causes lines to fall for us in pleasant places. Yeah, we have a goodly heritage in Christ Jesus. Oh yes, we are told on Monday, ask, ask, ask and you shall receive. Oh yes, retreated on Tuesday. Believe and you will receive. There's nothing he cannot do. There's nothing he will not do. No good thing will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. As we walk uprightly with our Father, there's nothing he will withhold from us. There's nothing he will hold back from us. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything that is us in Christ Jesus, because he has given unto us every spiritual blessing. In heavenly blessings is ours. All blessings he has given unto us, it is ours in Christ Jesus. We lay hold of it. We take it in the name of Jesus. Divine health. Oh yes, an abundant life in him. Oh yes, Jesus came that we might live life and live it abundant. We are destined to reign in life. We are destined to reign in life. Yes, Lord, to dine with kings. We take our position in Christ Jesus. Let's begin to pray for strength. Strength, strength. Oh yes, supernatural strength that will be strengthened with might in our inner man. As we go forth into this year, as we go forth into the next decade, we receive strength, supernatural strength. We will not faint. We will not be weary. In the name of Jesus, we will not quit. We will not give up. In the name of Jesus, we take hold and we lay hold of all that is ours in Christ Jesus. Strength from on high. Strength from on high. We receive strength to keep going on. Oh, yes, to be steadfast, to be committed. To God and to the things of God. In the name of Jesus. Ripa <laughs> 
Let's speak into the month of March. It will yield unto us great things, wondrous things, fruitful things, fruitfulness, productivity in every area of our lives, in all our endeavors. In the name of Jesus. Everything that needs to align in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, that needs to align in our favor for us to receive all that is ours. For us to receive all that the Lord has purposed and promised us. We receive it this month in the name of Jesus. We say begins to align the art of kings will be turned around in our favor. Oh yes, the art of kings will begin to work together for our good. Oh yes, men will begin to speak in our favor. The right people will be positioned in our path. We will be at the right place at the right time. The footsteps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. All oh, through this year, all oh, through Lord, every day are going out, are coming in, our footsteps are ordered of the Lord. You will bring us in contact with those you have purpose that are part of our journey in this year in the name of Jesus that would help us. They will see us, we will see them. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray for the discernment of spirit that will be yielded to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We would hear the Holy Spirit. We will know part time what to do. In the name of Jesus, we will know the people we're supposed to allow in into our space and the people we're supposed to let go. In the name of Jesus, we will not let in sheep in wolf's clothing in the name of Jesus. The right people, the right people at the right time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we receive all that is us this month of March, this year 2020. We worship you, mighty God. We bless your holy name, Lord. We give you all the glory, eternal rock of ages. We exalt you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are greatly to be praised. Thank you for what you have been doing. Lord. Thank you for what you are doing even at this time. Thank you for answered prayers. Thank you, Father, because we come boldly before your throne of grace to obtain mercy and receive grace even at the time of our need this evening. We thank you, mighty God. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, our teacher, the spirit of truth, teaching us all things, bringing to our remembrance everything we have been taught. In the name of Jesus, revealing the heart of the Father even unto us this day. In the name of Jesus, thank you for fresh revelation. Thank you for fresh revelation. This day, in the name of Jesus, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will not leave your presence the same way we came. Thank you, Father. Lord, it is all working together for our good. It is working in our favor. Thank you, blessed Lord. We worship and we adore you. Father, we commit this meeting into your hands, Lord. 
Have your weight and a rock of ages. Speak through me, everlasting Father. I submit myself to you, Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, glorify the Father all through this evening. We bless and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to day three. May be seated in God's presence. The Lord has been good to us. He has started. Um, can we please put on the screen? He has started with us a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful way from day one. And um, what's the key word for day one? For those of us that have been here, what's the key word for day one? Ask. Bless you. Day two. Okay, but there's a key word. Believing. Amen. We're good students. Amen. One thing we need to know is that the prayer for January, both on the bridge and the 12 days of glory, is not the end. We know that. It's continuous. It's just to build momentum, to propel us forward, even as we go into this new year. This wonderful year that the Lord himself has made for us. He has created us for us because there's something he wants to do. There's a change, a shift, something that is turning around. That's why he says this is a year of possibilities. Everything that seemingly has been impossible, he wants to step in and turn it around for us. In the name of Jesus. He says this is a year where we'll see and experience and enjoy fulfillment of dreams and visions in the name of Jesus. So it's very important that we take this year seriously. It's not just another year. It's the year that propels us into another decade. Amen. And, you know, while... I was preparing and thinking and uh, pondering on all of this. The Holy Spirit just reminded, a decade is 10 years. Can we, do we know that in 10 years, a lot of things will happen? Milestones, milestones, milestones. Some of the children in elementary school will be in high school. And even from there, some of them will go to university. Some people already in high school are going to go to university, graduate, they'll be getting married. So there's going to be a lot of milestones, even for us, for people that's going to get married by God's grace this year. At the end of the decade, they'll be celebrating a decade of their marriage. So it's a lot of things. So we cannot toy with us here because it's a determining factor. What we do with this year determines a lot that will happen all through the decade. So it's important we pay attention to every word that the Lord releases from his pulpit as he speaks to us. And as we're praying, he's going to give us personal words for ourselves. Because that is what this is all about. Something that we will hold on to personally that will propel us even as we go into the year and as we go into the decade. So let's not think short term. Let's not just think 2020 is beyond 2020. 2020 is just like leaping us into the decade. Amen. And the word God has for us today, as I was um, <coughs> praying and thinking about it. He just said, what came to my spirit is whatever he tells you to do, do it. So what can we say the key word for that is? Do it, yes. Obedience, thank you. That's how I'm looking for, obedience. Obedience. I know that the spirit of God, he says we should ask, he says we should believe, he says we should be obedient. Um, and we know the scripture for that is John, John 2, 5. John 2, 5. His mother said to the servant, whatever he says to you, do it. For a lot of us that know our Bible and will spend time reading the Bible, this is a story of um, Jesus, uh, the wedding of Canaan, and they ran out of wine. And his disciples went to meet him and said, oh, the wine has run out. And he says, what's that got to do with me? My time has not come. And his mother stepping in because he, she knows a little bit more than they know. 
that whatever he tells you, be obedient, be attentive, pay attention. He will say something. And whatever he says, do it. So I believe what God is telling us in this season is pay attention. Pay attention. There's a, some key words that will come. And it might just be for you. Every other person might not hear it. But the good thing, if we know the story, is the, the disciples yielded. They obeyed. And they followed through with the instruction of the mother. And he just told them, go and get pots of water and fill it. And he says they filled it to the brim. They filled it. They did not take anything. Whether it's going to work or not, they don't know. But they filled it to the brim. And they now took that. And he says, take that water and go and give it to the um, master of ceremony. And they did not question him. So there's a lot that will go on this year. There's a lot that we will see. There's a lot that we would hear. Let's just do what the Lord tells us to do. But that's not my key scripture this morning, uh, this evening. Let's go to Luke 5, 1 to 11. That's just the uh, foundation that the Lord gave me. So it says, so it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. Um, can we do amplified? I think amplified, yeah. Let's just look at that. It says, now it occurred that while the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the message of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. We're going to go down to 11, so we have to be very, very fast. Very, very fast. And he saw two boats drawn up by the lake, but the fishermen had gone down from them and were washing their nets. Let's just keep going. And getting into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon Peter, he requested him to draw away a little from the shore. And he sat down and con continued to teach the crowd of people from the boats. When they had stopped speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into deep waters and lower, lower your nets for all. And Simon Peter answered, Master, we toiled all night exhaustingly and caught nothing in our nest. But on the ground of your word, I will lower the nets again. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And as their nets were at the point of breaking, they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and take hold with them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. For he was gripped with bewildering amazement, aligned to terror, and no way with him at the all of fish which they had made. Okay, we'll stop there. Okay, no. And so also were James and John and the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon Peter. And Jesus said to Simon, Have no fear, from now on, You'll be catching men. I'm going to start with um, lay emphasis on verse 1. Let's go back to verse 1. Because I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with the scripture, even for myself. At the time, you know, the Lord led me because I thought it was John 2. Okay, whatever he says, do it. Okay, I was going to focus and he kept on taking me to Luke 5, 1. And I thought, okay, the same thing. He entered the boat of Peter and, you know, he spoke to him and Peter obeyed. But he kept on saying, go to verse 1. And he says, now we are caught that while the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the message of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, Sea of Galilee, verse 1 and 2. Yeah, not just one. And he saw two boats drawn by the lake, but the fishermen were down from them and were washing their nets. And, you know, I was looking at these two scriptures, and it says Jesus was there ministering the word. There were a lot of people, a crowd of people around him. And it says, and he saw. Another version says, and he noticed. So you can imagine a crowd of people. They were pressing everybody there wanting to hear the voice, the word of God. But he said he saw. He turned and he saw. He turned and he noticed the empty boats. And then he went into one of the boats and it happened to be the boat of Peter. And I was like, Lord, what is this? And he says, Peter was doing 
just like we look at the story of Mary and Martha, there was a crowd. They were learning at the feet of Jesus. Everybody came to hear the word. But Peter was so engrossed in his day-to-day -day activity, in his business, he didn't catch any fish, and he ignored the word of God. And for some reason, you know, it was like, Jesus, no, this guy is not getting it. He needs to do what is necessary. Like he told Mary, Martha, when he said, she said, Mary is not helping me. He said, no, Mary is doing what is necessary. She's sitting at my feet and listening to the word. This is a year where God is saying for us to get what we need to propel us and to experience the impossible being, becoming possible. We need to do what is needful. Sit at his feet. Spend time in his presence. Listen to him. We see him just telling us exactly what we've learned. I know last year and year before, there was a lot of emphasis on Matthew 6.33, and I just realized it cannot go away. The Lord has spoken. His word is sure. His word will come to pass. But there's a lesson he was saying, and that is speaking to somebody, to all of us. This is not the time to run after things. This is the time to spend more time with Jesus. And if we look at, um, I'm not sure which of the verses now. It says, let's go to three. After he saw the two boats and went in there, he now called Peter. It says he requested him to draw away a little from the shore. And he sat down, continued to teach the crowd of people from the boat. And what the Holy Spirit was ministering to me there is like, he had to take Peter away from the noise and from the crowd that he would pay attention to him. Because with that noisy crowd, he could not hear him. All Peter was thinking about is, I failed today. I didn't make it in business. No clients, no money. How do I pay the bills? He was so focused on that. Jesus had to take him away from all of that and say, sit down with me and listen. He was forced to listen because they had no choice. He was with Jesus in the boat and there was no noise around him. For a lot of us, we know that we're very busy. We have maybe our jobs, our businesses. Some of us do two things. But Jesus is saying, if you can only, only, only just take time, spend time with me. Spend time with me. Because there are things I want to show you. There are things I want to teach you. There are things you don't know that I want to reveal to you. What you're struggling and toiling for, it's nothing to me. Let's look at four. I'm not sure if it's four or five now. Verse four, please. He says, when, and when he stopped speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep water and lower, lower your nets for a oil. And we know what happened. So it was like, after he had finished ministering, he now turned to Peter that that thing you are running after is nothing to me. Cast your nets to the right. And he caught more than I believe he won maybe for the year. For some of us this year, the last 10 years, it doesn't matter how it has been, God is saying it's nothing to me. Suddenly, before we turn, before we know it, it doesn't take me time to get this done. But the important thing is, you have to put me first. You have to spend time. Turn your face to me. Sit at my feet. Hear from me. Listen to me. And then obey me. That's what God has for us. This year of possibility. This is a season where God wants to prepare us, strengthen us. 
if you remember um, Elijah, after he had um, done a lot of things with the prophet of Baal, you know, a lot of casting fire, falling, different things. And just a little thing he had, Jezebel was after him and he ran and suddenly felt everything about his life was done. And God said, why are you running? He sent an angel to feed him. The, our own food this year, this decade, is the word of God. Because we know that when there will be victories, when there are triumphs, there will be challenges. What are we going to do in that situation? Because the enemy will read, if we look at Luke 4, 1, I'm not going there. But as soon as Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, it says he was, while he was still in the spirit, Satan came. And he tempted him. So even while we're still fasting, if we don't have the word to hold on to, if we're not steadfast, we're not rooted, we're not grounded ourselves, not because oh, we come to church and we pray and we pray and we pray and there's no root in us. It's just a matter of time. The enemy will make attempts and he will not steal from any one of us in Jesus' name. So what the Lord wants us to do this, is, this year, there are four things because we're going to pray, so I'm not going to spend time talking too much about it. But four things, it says we must purpose to have a closer work with him. It's a personal thing. It's a personal work. It's, it's, it's so personal. I was asking my children, I told them, how old are you going to be in 10 years? They said it. I said, what do you think you will see or you would have achieved in 10 years? They both said what they thought. I said, so it's not, you're not going to rely on mommy's prayers. Everybody's got to pray their own prayer. Because there are things you are trusting God for yourself. This is a season that is going to shape in a lot of things concerning your destiny. I will pray, but you have to pray. And that's the same thing for each and every one of us. There will be corporate prayers. And I sincerely hope for those of us watching online campuses here that we're actually tuning in to the early morning prayers. It's a sacrifice <laughs> that will last us a long time. That will change our lives, that will shape in our destinies. It says purpose to have a closer walk with him. To spend quality time in his presence. You decide when that quality time is. Whether if it works for you, if it's in the morning or if it's in the evening. But spend quality time in his presence. You need the word of God to keep you going. Each step of the way. Every t step of victory, everything you trust, there must be a word. Like Pastor said, what are your goals that if they wake him up, he knows for the church, what is it? It's for you. You come, agree with me about this. What's the word you're standing on? You should have at least two, three scriptures you're holding on to that are alive to you, so real to you. Listen to him. Because God wants to give us clear, precise instructions and directions this year. For us to go, it's not going to be another year, things are just going as we think and we come back. No. Precise, clear, precise direction and it is personal to you. You know this is my word from God. This is what is telling me to do. So even when everything doesn't seem to be going the way you expect it to go, you have a word you're standing on. And it says, obey his voice. Total, complete obedience. We can't be selective about what God tells us this year. This is okay for me. This doesn't seem right. We heard, at least from what we read in John 2, it didn't make sense. Put water in a pot. Take that water and go and give the master of ceremony. What if nothing happens? But they knew better than questioning Jesus. Peter too said it. I've told all night. All night. But nevertheless at thy word. 
you could have lost out just by saying, <laughs> Jesus, I know those waters have been here all night. Because what God wants to do for us is not going to be the usual. It's not going to be the same way we've been doing it. And that's why when we start praying, I say pray in the spirit. Because aside from praying that others that need to move and align with what God wants to do for us, we want them to align and obey. We need to obey as well. We need to be in tune. We must not get too familiar with God and the things of God. We must not know that we know God. Every day is a new day, is a fresh day. Instructions are new. He told Moses, um, speak, uh, strike the rock. The second time, speak to the rock. But Moses felt <laughs> the first time he said I should strike and he struck. And that took him out. He didn't make it to um, the promised land just because of that. So we have to be mindful this year. We have to be open. We have to be ready to hear him and we have to obey him. Amen. We're going to rise up now. We're going to pray. Based on what we have heard, it's a short exhortation, but I believe that the key word here is obedience. The key word here is spending time in God's presence. Quality time, listening to his voice, away from the noise, like he took Peter away, away from the crowd. He moved him. He said, get into the boat and move away from a crowd. He's teaching us something. We have to move away from the noise. Away from the noise. Those things that are distracting, TV, phone, whatever. Move away. Move away. Move away. Focus on him. Learn at his feet. Sit at his feet. It's just me and Jesus. You spend more time. Thank God we have the COLC app where we can listen 24-7. We have YouTube. We can make um, better use of YouTube than some, some, what some of us use it for. Just spend time in God's word. Keep hearing the word. Faith comes by the word. Possibilities. Nothing is impossible with our God. But it's for how do we believe? What do we believe? What's the strength of our faith? Amen. Let's rise up, please. Let's rise up, please, as we go into a time of prayer. Let's thank God for his word. I believe each and every one of us, this word has reached us in different ways, just like for me. It's not for everybody, it's for me as well. It's a time where we rededicate ourselves to God, consecrating ourselves to God, yielding ourselves to him, totally surrendering to him, receiving fresh empowerment from his throne room this evening, receiving fresh unction, receiving fresh fire to go on with this new work, in, with this work in this new season in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, ekede basahata, kaba shekede basahata. Yes, he says we should lay aside those weights that easily beset us. We know what the weights are. We know what the distractions are. We know what those things are that has been taking our mind, our, our focus away from God. We are busy, yes, and it, it, it really is legit. But it's taking us away like Peter. Peter was doing what a man should do. He was out there doing, making money, trying to look for money, food for his family. But at the time, he was missing out on the time he should have spent in God's presence. Even while Jesus was ministering, he was busy. Oh, yes, cleaning his nets. That we will not be distracted with things. Oh, yes, with things. We things that will take our focus away from God, that we will know the right time, the right time to spend in God's presence, to spend quality time in his presence. In the name of Jesus, everything that will distract us, take our focus away from God. Let's begin to lay them aside, lay them at the feet of Jesus. Yes, maybe, oh Lord, I have two jobs. I can't even make it to church. Even evening services, I can't make it. There's nothing God cannot do. Just like he showed Peter. I would say when after I was done speaking, he just told Peter, "Is a word, Lord, there's a way you can give me just one thing to do that would double my income in the name of Jesus. I choose to trust you for it this year. I want to spend more time in your presence. I want to focus on you. I want to get to know you more. I want to be stronger in my work, in my relationship with you, not just on a surface level. Father, Lord, as you called Abraham, friend, I want you to call me your friend in the name of Jesus 
Ripa zeke de bazaka taka ba zeke de bazaka taka ba zeke de bazeke de. Ripa zoko po zeke de bazeke de ke de bazeke de bazaka taka ba zeke de. Ripa zeke de bazoko po zeke de bazeke de. Ripa zanda ka ba zeke de bazaka taka ika bazeke de. Ripa zoko po zeke de bazeke de bazaka taka ba zeke de bazeke de. Ripa zanda ka ika bazeke de bazeke de bazoko po zeke de. Ika bazeke de bazaka ta. Let's pray for us. Yes, dedicating ourselves, rededicating ourselves to God. Oh, yes, so surrendering all to Him, laying it all at His feet. In the name of Jesus, the Lord sees the heart of men. He knows it. He knows it. Why we sincerely, sincerely want more of Him. We're hungry for more of Him. We want Him to fill us afresh and anew. We want a new work with Him. Oh, yes, enough of trying to do things in our own way. Enough of trying to do things in our our own strength. There's a limit to how far we can go as man. We're ready to receive from him. We're ready for him to guide us, to direct our path this year in the name of Jesus. Let's pray according to Psalm 119 verse 18. The Lord will open our eyes that we will behold wondrous things in his word. In the name of Jesus, as we spend time in his word, that the Lord will open our eyes to see. He will open our eyes to behold wondrous things in his word. In the name of Jesus, we begin to receive fresh revelation from the throne room of a father as we spend time in his word. His word will be alive to us. That the Lord will give us a, an understandable and a teachable heart that I had to be open to receive from God. Yes, we open up our hearts and minds, yes, to hear, to receive from the Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. In the mighty name of Jesus, Yes, Oh, yes, Lord, Psalm one one nine verse. 105, it says his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, that his word will lighten our path even all through this year, through this decade, that his word will shine forth light, light on our path, guiding us, directing our every step in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, shining light on our path as we go forth for the rest of this year into this decade in the name of Jesus. The light of God shining forth, lighting our path in the name of Jesus. Yes, divine direction. Oh, yes, it says we would hear a voice behind our ears telling us 
us which way to go. The Holy Spirit guiding us, leading us, directing our every step, every move, giving us clear direction. In the name of Jesus, this will not be a season where we will toil. It will not be a season where we will gamble. It will not be a season where we're confused. We're clear. We're clear with where we're going. We're clear with what we need to do. We're clear with the next step to take. In the name of Jesus, divine direction. In the name of Jesus, we're going to pray for divine favor this year, this season. We need the favor of God more than ever before. We need the favor of God more than ever before. When we look at that story in Luke 5, oh yes, Peter was minding his business. He was not even interested in what Jesus was saying or doing. He was so focused on his situation. It seemed like a hopeless situation. What will I do? How will I do it? No money to pay the bills. Oh yes, I cannot go. What will I do? But Jesus noticed him. Jesus saw him in the crowd. Jesus noticed him. Yeah, that is grace singling him out. Grace singled Peter out to bless him. Let's begin to pray for favor. Divine favor. This year, this decade, it's the favor of God that will propel us, that will accelerate our progress, that will grant us supernatural speed. Oh yes, he gave Peter more than enough. We saw Ephesians 3.20 at work. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever think or ask or imagine. That was what Peter saw. In the name of Jesus, we receive it, Lord. Unusual favor, uncommon favor, unprecedented favor. Oh yes, the right people will see us. The right people will locate us. The right people will rise up to help us in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I know we've been praying for destiny helpers we will pray again for destiny helpers they will locate us Jesus was a destiny helper for Peter at that time he was a timely helper he came at the right time he came just on time when Peter needed him in the name of Jesus timely helpers in the name of Jesus men of influence that can help us, that will speak, oh yes, about us in the name of Jesus, in the right place. Hekede basekede. Oh yes, Jesus didn't need to consult anybody to do what he did. Yes, people of influence, that all they need is, yes, it is done and it is settled. They will speak and it is settled. It will turn our lives around. It will turn our lives around. It turned Peter's business around. Hekede basekede basekede. The right people. Oh yes, we will be noticed at the right time. We will be singled out for blessing. In the name of Jesus. It's a season where grace, grace, grace will find us. Grace will locate us. In the name of Jesus. The favor of God surrounding us. Everywhere we go, we pray it over our children. Everywhere they go, they will have favor with God. They will have favor with men. In the name of Jesus, we we will have favor with God. We will have favor with men. We speak of our center of life, church, unusual favor, uncommon favor, unprecedented favor. With those in authority, with those that are people of influence, with decision makers, we will have favor. The people that can make decisions, the right decision that will favor us, we will find favor with them. In the mighty name of Jesus, regardless of what you're looking for your favor will cause your file to be brought from underneath to the top in the name of Jesus if they're going to 
Oh yes, I prove only one, it will be yours. Oh yes, in the crowd, multitudes around, Jesus singled Peter's boat. Jesus singled Peter out. Father, I thank you this year. You will single me out for your blessing. You will single me out for your blessing. In the name of Jesus, unusual favor, uncommon favor. I speak it over our lives. I speak it over the life of everyone in Center of Life Church. I speak it over our children. Everywhere they go, anywhere they turn to, they will find favor. They will find favor. Favor will open doors for us. Favor will cast new opportunities to come our way. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes, where we're really seemingly not qualified. The favor of God will propel us to that top place, to that position. It will cast us to be promoted. It will cast men. Oh yes, people that will help us to notice us. In the mighty name of Jesus, they would hear about us. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes, the favor of God will cast God himself to speak to men about us. Oh yes, God sent men, angels, to the house of Peter because of Cornelius in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, he sent someone to, to Paul. Saul, when he became Paul, he sent it to him. He says, go to the street called Straight. It was very clear exactly where Paul was. And he says, go and meet him. And this is what you should do. God will send people to us precisely in the name of of Jesus. Oh yes, he caused the kings not to, the king oh yes, to be restless. He could not sleep. That the file concerning Mordecai's issue will be brought to him because it was time to favor the Jews. It was time to change the story of the Jews. It was time to change their status. Well, yes, in the name of Jesus, this is a season where we'll experience supernatural status change in a, a status supernaturally. We'll move to the next level. In the name of Jesus, he told the children of Israel, you have dwelt around this mountain long enough. It is time to go forward. It is a time to go forward. It is a time to move up. In the name of Jesus, we will not remain in the same situation. We will not be seen in the same position. We will not be seen in the same place. Even by the end of this year, by the first quarter of this year, there must be a tangible shift in position. There must be a tangible turn around. Oh yes, it concerning wherever we are. Our story will not be the same. In the name of Jesus, it will be obvious to all. Oh yes, we have had an encounter with Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father Lord. We receive it, Lord. Father, we thank you. Proverbs 18, 19, 18, 16. It says that our gift will make room for us. It will make room for us before kings. Our gift will make room where there had been no room. Where there says the position, no positioning. Where it says it's impossible, everything has been closed. Our gift will make room for us. It will make room for us this year. It will make room. The impossible will become possible. Our gift will make room for us before kings. It will bring us before kings. In the name of Jesus, it will bring us before men of influence. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes, let's begin to pray that the Lord himself will give us. He has said this year there will be fulfillment of visions. Oh yes, of dreams, talents, gifts. Oh yes, in innovations that will bring us before kings. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray it forth in our lives. In the name of Jesus, divine revelation. In the name of Jesus, he gave um, Joseph only one dream. It was that dream. Oh yes, ability to interpret that dream that made him the prime minister. They give the talent that will bring us before kings. We'll receive it in the name of Jesus. They give the talent that will change us 
status, that will change our level, that will reposition us for good. This year, this season, this decade, in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, ideas, insights. Oh yes, the gift that will make us, oh yes, solution providers. In the name of Jesus, global influencers. That will cast our voices to be heard uh, before kings, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we receive it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. It was the same interpretation of dream that brought Daniel, oh yes, up, oh yes, Lord, to a position that lifted him up. Oh yes, in Babylon, in the name of Jesus, we receive divine revelation. We receive divine revelation. We receive divine revelation. The gift, the talent, oh yes, inside of us, we speak it into the lives of our children. There will be bathing of new giftings. There will be bathing of new ideas. There will be bathing of innovation. Sound mind. We pray for insight. Yes, according to Isaiah 45, the Lord will reveal to us the treasures of darkness in the name of Jesus, the hidden riches of secret places. Oh yes, we begin to receive treasures of darkness. Those ideas, those insights, those opportunities that are hidden to men begin to reveal unto us. Oh yes, our eyes be open to see. That light will shine forth. Oh yes, pray in the spirit. Father, Lord, I thank you. The giftings you have put inside of me will begin to find expression in the season. In the name of Jesus, insight, ideas, books you have put inside of me will begin to find expression this season. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, the gifts that you are putting in me, inside of me that will make room for me before kings. That will bring me before kings. Not before me, men. In the name of Jesus. That will change my status. That will change my level. In the mighty name of Jesus. That will bring glory to your name. That will announce Jesus to my world. In the mighty name of Jesus. He will begin to find expression. We pray it over our children. They will not remain in the same level. They will not remain on the same level. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the academics. Unusual and common wisdom. The spirit of excellence. The spirit of counsel and might. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh yes, that gift that will cause us to be outstanding, that will cause us to stand out in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh yes, nobody looked at Peter the same way from that day forward. In the name of Jesus. Yes, our voices will be heard in this land in the name of Jesus because of the giftings, because of the talent, because of the innovations that will batted forth in our midst, in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, insight, ideas. Yes, Lord, we'll receive it, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yes, 
Yes, Lord, that will change our status forever in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, like Daniel. Oh, yes, after the interpretation of dreams. Oh, yes, the king himself said, The God of Daniel is the God you will serve. Yes, Lord, that will cause many to be drawn to you, they will come to know you. In the name of Jesus, they will come to know our God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh yes, let's take this time, the few minutes left, begin to pray your own personal prayer. What you expect. Pray through from the spirit. Pray it into the physical. Pray to manifestation. In the name of Jesus, we call those things which be not as though they are. Yes, Lord. The word of God assures me I will not see wind, I will not see rain, but the valley will be filled. It says this is but a small matter before our Father. Oh yes, before God, in the name of Jesus, this is my year of possibility. I look at the situation, I do not see how it will turn around. But Lord, I thank you because you are the God of possibilities. I believe your word. I believe that which you have spoken. Yes, you said I'm the Lord, your God, the God of all flesh. Is anything too difficult for me to do? Lord, I believe you, Lord. You are God who turns situation around. There's nothing impossible for you. There's nothing too difficult for you to do. You said the art of kings are in your hands. I believe, Lord, that you are turning the art of kings around in my favor. What the enemy had meant for evil, you have stepped in and turned around for my good. I thank you, Lord. Yes, on that day when the enemies of the Jews, oh yes, what they had expected, the opposite happened. I believe that is my testimony in the name of Jesus. Father, I hand over, yes, the affairs of my life. I hand over my destiny. I hand over my goals to you. As you stepped into the boat of Peter, oh yes, I ask, Lord, that you step into the boat of my life. Steer my ship, my ship, the boat of my life in the direction you have planned and purpose. I let go, Father, Lord, of my will. Not my will, but your your will be done. Not my plans, but your plans right now. Yes, Lord, I lay it all at your feet, mighty God. I lay it all at your feet, Lord. I yield to you totally, Lord. I surrender all unto you, Lord. I lay it at your feet, Jehovah. I thank you, mighty God. I thank you, King of glory. I thank you, Lord of lords. I thank you, great I am. I thank you, Holy One. We have just about two more minutes left. Oh, yes, pressing. Oh, we thank you, Father. His presence is here. He has said, where two or more gather, therein he is in our midst. Oh, yes, the Lord is in our midst. He's answering prayers. He's moving in our midst. In the name of Jesus. The ministering angels ministering to our needs right now. In the name of Jesus. This is a year where we dream big, ask big, ask big. He says we should ask for nations as our inheritance. Nothing is impossible with our God. The earth is our fathers and the fullness thereof. Yes, he's the miracle worker, he's the promise keeper. As he not said, will he not bring it to pass? He says, I'm not the son of man to lie. Anything I've said, I am bound by my word to bring it to pass. I'm a covenant keeping God. I keep my covenant to a thousand generations. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name, Jehovah. We exalt your holy name. Yes, Lord. Everything is working together for our good. Everything is aligning in our favor. In the mighty name of Jesus, the project will be completed. 
and started it and will finish it. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything we need for the completion of the project supernaturally, miraculously. Father, we thank you for the provision. We thank you for the provision. You are the same God that said Peter should go and get gold coin out of the mouth of a fish. There's nothing you cannot do. There's nothing that is impossible with you. There's nothing. Oh, yes. We thank you, Father. Lord, the resources are available unto us. More than enough. Overflowing like we saw with Peter. Oh, yes. You are more than enough, God. Exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever think or ask of. We worship you. Let's begin to thank God. Let's begin to bless his holy name. Let's begin to worship him. He's worthy of our praise. He's deserving of our praise. He's a faithful father. He's a loving father. Thank him for this time in his presence. Thank him for the word that we have heard. Thank him because, Lord, we purpose to obey you all through total obedience, complete obedience, all through this year. We thank you, mighty God. We worship you, eternal rock of ages. Thank you for answered prayers, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you all. We'll meet on the bridge tomorrow and at our various campuses tomorrow evening as well. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>